Nella sua famiglia ci sono stati 11 casi di Alzheimer fra persone giovani, una media di 47 anni di età. Quando è stata la prima volta che ha sentito parlare di questa malattia? My parents did tell me that uh, my grandfather Ralph was one of 14 siblings. And of those 14 children, 13 of them lived into adulthood uh, and 11 of those 13 ended up with early Alzheimer, early onset Alzheimer's. And um, I didn't uh, really see it firsthand until <clears throat> in college, I took my uh, girlfriend at the time to uh, a small town in, called Beaver, Oklahoma. And um, we went to a little pizza place um, just before a family reunion. And we got there and we sat down and we were eating pizza and then uh, my Uncle Roy walked in with his wife Georgia. Uncle Roy walked up to the table and we were all greeting him and he reached for the back of his chair to, to pull out his chair and he missed. And then he reached again and missed again and finally he grabbed the chair and was able to pull it out. And he tried to sit down and he nearly fell. And I was just confused uh, because he was in his mid 40s. And um, I looked around the table and I just saw grief and shock and anger. Uh, and that's when it hit me. Oh my goodness, you know, my Uncle Roy, my dad's brother, is sitting right here next to me and it's very real. Um, this, this is a, the beginning of, of Alzheimer's for him. And that's, that's really when it hit me. And I think I was 19, maybe 20 at the time. And so it was a big shock to realize that it was real and present right there in front of me. Suo zio ha scritto un libro su questa malattia. Gary Reiswig, he wrote a book called The Thousand Mile Stare, which chronicles many of our family members getting sick and also the science that was developing during that time and beginning to study our family. In the back of the book, it mentioned this uh, very beginning of a, um, of a new study that was specifically um, reaching out to families like mine, uh, presenilin 1, presenilin 2, um, and APOE gene mutations, and wanting to find more and more participants. And so uh, my brother and myself and my father contacted them and, and uh, began being involved in their observational study. ha deciso di sottoporsi al test genetico che le avrebbe detto se era a rischio Alzheimer. So if you can imagine if, if you don't mind me kind of explaining why the study is so impactful in the entire field of Alzheimer's right now. Um, everybody that's studying Alzheimer's is focused on our uh, dominantly inherited Alzheimer's network. It's called the Diane study. And the reason everybody is watching it is because, as you can imagine, trying to study all of Alzheimer's um, without us, you would have to study a very large portion of the population and wait many, many years to see who gets the disease. But because they have people like us, they know exactly, person by person, who is going to get the gen uh, who has the genetic mutation and therefore is going to get sick someday and they generally know in each family how old we will be when we start to show symptoms and so there's no question about who is going to get the disease or not and therefore they can really study all of us at once going through time and watching how the brain develops the disease alzheimer's um, kind of like a, a flip book of different ages of brains and they can watch the disease like a movie and see how it works. And so they've been able to actually prove a lot of the theories behind uh, Alzheimer's. And, and one of those is that the disease begins developing in the brain 20 to 25 years before the age of symptoms. And so the idea of the study is to try to prevent Alzheimer's, uh, find out early on who uh, among the whole population is going to get sick for everyone else who'd probably test it at age 45 or 50 years old. Um, and if you're showing those physical signs, you would then start to get a drug and never get Alzheimer's. You would die of old age of something else. And so the idea is to actually prevent the onset of Alzheimer's because it's um, because once, once you have symptoms, it's too late. It's uh, like letting the, the small campfire has now already become a forest fire and it's, it's too late at that point. 
sta ancora partecipando a questa ricerca? I've been in the study for uh, 13 years and uh, a few years ago we switched to uh, being on active drug um, or placebo. And at the end of that portion we found out that one of the drugs was very effective and the other was not. And so they, they took that very effective drug and they said, well, we need a few more years, but we need everyone to be uh, on active drug, no more placebo. So that's when I had a choice. I had to decide if I wanted to find out my genetic status and continue on active drug uh, or go on not knowing if I carried the gene mutation. And, um, and you wouldn't have been allowed to continue in the study if you, if you didn't know. That's right. So that was really the tipping point. I thought, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I was 42 at the time and I thought, well, it's probably time for me to find out anyway. Um, and this will give me an opportunity to go ahead and be on active drug if I carry the gene mutation. si è sentito quando ha avuto poi la risposta definitiva. So we got a little Airbnb in a, in a town in the mountains and um, got the call from the, the genetic counselor. I mean it was, it was the worst phone call you ever get other than losing a child. I found out that I was, was positive with the gene mutation and um, you know I, I was 42 and uh, my average The, the average age of onset in my family is 47. And so, um, how did we feel? We felt terrible. <laughs> we, felt, we felt awful. Just a really powerful time of grief and crying and wailing and being upset and punching the pillows. And but that's kind of the beautiful thing about time is you, you just wear out. You know, you cry and cry and cry and eventually you have no more tears. And, and then uh, you get hungry and have to go out to dinner. So <laughs> we, we, we went out to dinner and discussed what we wanted to do with the rest of my days. Lei era molto giovane quando ha saputo che suo marito, il suo futuro marito, poteva ammalarsi. Perché ha deciso di rimanere? I, I love him. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I loved him very much. I was 19, but I had known him since I was 16 and i, I just I couldn't imagine being with anyone else. I didn't want to imagine being with anyone else. And I told him, I'd, I'd rather have 30 good years with you than a full lifetime with anybody else. And I don't have any regrets. In seguito avete anche deciso di avere dei figli. You know, my, my own mother died of cancer just after her 50th birthday. I firmly believe that, you know, even if our children have hardship, even if they have health problems, no matter what comes in life, life is still beautiful and precious and sacred and worth living. So it was never a question for us of whether or not we wanted to have children. We always wanted to. Come l'amore della sua famiglia e dei suoi cari l'ha salvata? I think without the love and support of my family uh, and even my friends, um, I, I would have a, a very difficult time um, dealing with any of the hardships we've been through, uh, and especially this one. Like anyone who's gone through a, a difficult diagnosis, um, there's a lot of fear. Having family and having my faith is really important to me and really grounding. In che modo la sua esperienza lavorativa e il supporto che lei dà alle persone che segue come coach è influenzata dall'esperienza della malattia? I get the opportunity to share my story and remind everyone that they're going to die. <laughs> It's a very morbid uh, discussion to have, but, but that's the life and reality that I live. Uh, I'm not currently dying, right? I'm fine. I, I have all of my wits about me. I have a wonderful trip and family, and I, I'm living a, a normal life of a 43-year-old. Um, but I know when and how I'm going to die, uh, and that's very strange. Most people don't know how much sand is left in the hourglass. I think that I like to remind people to sort of wake up and do what you want to do with your time. 
whatever time you have, whether you might die tomorrow or next year or t 10 years or 20 years, I, I don't think we can live the old saying of um, carpe diem. I, I don't think that that's realistic. We, we need a career. We have to think about more than just tomorrow. We need to think about two and three years from now, right? Crede che la scienza potrà fare ancora qualcosa che nei prossimi anni possano esserci delle scoperte a suo favore? I would love that. <laughs> I would love that. I, I am actually very um, hopeful. I think the world has generally cured all of the things that kill us quickly, right? And now we're left with all of the things that are killing us slowly. <laughs> And the brain seems to be the new great horizon that science is aiming at. Um, and if there's one thing I would ask all of science and, and the general public to realize is that Alzheimer's is not normal aging. It's not a normal part of aging. It is a disease. Um, my father died of Alzheimer's at 66, my uncle at 54, and my grandpa when I was one. And it's a disease that therefore we can treat, we can figure it out. And we don't want to lose all of the amazing stories of our parents and our grandparents until they die of, uh, of healthy old age. You know, I think my wife's uh, grandfather lived well into his 90s and had all of his wits about him and it was beautiful. And then of, of course it's sad when they, when they pass away of something else, but, um, but that contrast shows you It really is a disease and we can fix it. So let's fix it. Lei sta viaggiando e collezionando ricordi, i ricordi che sono così importanti quando si parla di Alzheimer. Cosa sono per lei e cosa prevede per il futuro? I would agree with you that I'm collecting memories. Um, I would also add that I'm just enjoying the present. Just enjoy the time with my family now. Uh, because I may get uh, five more healthy years, I may get 10 or 15, um, or, or maybe a full life, I don't know. But I'm definitely collecting memories of being with important people. It's wonderful to come to beautiful Rome and other places around Italy. I enjoy traveling because my wife loves traveling, and uh, I like to fulfill her dreams. <laughs> But um, All of the material possessions and traveling around the world or whatever, if, if we can do those things, wonderful, but it's really about the people. I'm collecting memories of laughing at my son's jokes, he's hilarious, and watching my beautiful daughter you know, stroll through the streets of Rome. I just uh, am collecting memories of, of people. She asked what your plans are for the future. Plans? I mean, I just want to travel with her. <laughs> <laughs> But I have to work too, so.